For years, I've been a dedicated Windows user, enjoying its familiar GUI experience. But what if I step out of my comfort zone and try something different? In this video, we'll dive into the world of Linux, exploring its features and comparing it to Windows. And here's the twist. I'm using Linux as my primary OS, so without wasting any time, let's get started. First, we need to choose the best Linux distribution for our PC. Unlike Windows, which has around 13 versions, Linux offers over 600 different distributions. After lots of research, I've found these three top contenders for personal use, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, and Zorin OS. After reviewing their websites, I discovered that Zorin OS Mention stands out as an alternative to both Windows and Mac OS. It provides a software store similar to Windows and is ready for gaming with support for Steam and Epic Games. So, it's decided. We're going with Zorin OS. After hitting download, I was greeted with three ISO options. Zorin OS Pro, fancy and paid, core, basic and free, and educational, for the beginners. I'll go with core because it's perfect for everyday use. And best of all, it won't cost me a dime. Want Gmail? Just skip. ISO is downloaded, and now time to create bootable pen drive. We need this Rufus software. Let's download. After all configuration, I just put it ISO and start the process. Warning all data will be deleted, okay? After booting my pen drive, I see two options, install or try. I'll choose install. After configuring the language and software updates, it's time to choose the installation type. Since I don't want Windows, I simply select erase disk and install Zorin OS. After confirming all the changes and setting up device information, installation will be done. And here is showing what's new. All right, here we have our notifications and calendar. Over in the side control center, which is similar to Windows 11, let's switch to the dark theme. Oh, look at that. The wallpaper is dynamic, just like in Windows 11. Nice. We also have a nightlight option for eye protection. Over here is the power profile. I always choose the performance mode. You can adjust the volume here, and all my speaker outputs are detected automatically. And here, we can take screenshots or record the screen, similar to Xbox recording. Let's move to the start menu. In Zorin appearance, we can customize our layout. There are only four layouts available, and for more options, we need to upgrade. However, I'm quite happy with the third one. Here we can change the color, and in effect, my favorite option is jelly mode. It's close to the Mac tab effect. On the desktop, you can add icons. In the interface, we can change taskbar settings such as style, position, behavior, etc. Let's connect to the internet. As an external Wi-Fi adapter user, I was pleased to see that Zorin OS automatically detected it, which is quite convenient. For backgrounds, Zorin OS offers a variety of built-in wallpapers. In terms of multitasking, there's a hot corner option. By enabling this feature, you can easily open another app or switch to a different desktop simply by moving your cursor to the designated corner. In the About section, both my CPU and GPU are automatically detected. Since I'm using an integrated GPU, it was easily recognized. Now, let's check for software updates. It looks like there's a 790 megabyte update available. I'll go ahead and install it. The update is complete, so let's restart the system. Overall interface is very user-friendly for any Windows user. However, let's take a look at the software offerings. An operating system isn't very useful if it doesn't provide essential software. Our first option need is office work, including applications like Excel and Word, etc. For our office tasks, we have LibreOffice, a free and open source office software. It's the best alternative to MS Office, and the best part is that it's completely free. After completing your work, you can save it in any format you need. So, our first need is check. Next, let's check out the software store. 
When I opened it, I saw many software options, but most were unfamiliar. After looking around, I found Blender and decided to install it. I also added several well-known software to the download section. I was excited to try them all, but then I hit my first Linux error, unable to install. Clicking more information showed the full error message. I copied the error message and searched for solutions online. After trying numerous command lines and visiting many websites, the problem remained unsolved. However, through this research, I learned that Flathub is essentially an app store for Linux, offering a centralized repository for finding and installing applications. In my case, it wasn't set up correctly, so I decided to reinstall Flathub on my Zorin OS. According to the Flathub website, Flathub is built into Zorin OS, and you can use the software store app to download Flathub apps. However, after spending two hours researching and troubleshooting, I still couldn't resolve the store issue. In this section, I decided to shift my focus to another task. As a Linux user, I've learned that if an error isn't resolved after spending a lot of time on it, it's best to move on. Unfortunately, our second requirement, the software store in Zorin OS, didn't meet our needs. So, let's proceed to our third requirement, the browser. In every Linux distribution, Firefox is the built-in browser. But what about support for other browsers? To check, I first tried to install the Edge browser. On the website, all platforms are displayed, and with a little scroll, I saw that Microsoft Microsoft Edge is now available on Linux. We have two options to install it. I'm going with the .deb file because it's just like a .exe file. After downloading the file, I opened the file manager and double-clicked on it. A warning message appeared, but I proceeded anyway. It looked like a store interface. After hitting install and waiting a few minutes, the open option became available and Microsoft Edge was installed. Next, I tried installing Chrome. Chrome automatically detected our Linux device, and I chose the .deb file. After downloading the file and following the same process, Chrome installed without any errors. This shows that in Linux, you can install any browser you like. Now, let's move on to our fourth requirement. For photo editing on Linux, Photopea is an excellent alternative to Photoshop. It offers nearly all the tools found in Photoshop allowing you to drag and drop any photo for editing. Additionally, you can create an icon directly in your software menu for easy access. For more flexibility, we can also try GIMP, a great photo editing software for Linux. To get it, open the terminal. Before downloading any package, first update all the packages for a better installation experience. After updating, just type sudo apt install GIMP. Once the installation is complete, you can find GIMP in the menu. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure how to use GIMP, but after some effort, I managed to import an image. Now, let's move on to our fifth need, video editing. For advanced video editing, DaVinci Resolve is one of the best software options available. To get started, I went to the official website and downloaded DaVinci Resolve 19 for our PC. After downloading and extracting the files, I found an instructions PDF and an installation file. Installing DaVinci Resolve isn't straightforward. I opened the terminal, but before starting the installation, I needed to install some additional drivers like LibFuse 2. After installing this driver, I referred to the PDF, copied the DaVinci run command, and pasted it into the terminal next. I copied and pasted the second command from the PDF. At this point, I encountered two more missing driver issues. I copied the names of these drivers, installed them, and then faced another missing driver. I installed this driver as well. When I tried to install DaVinci Resolve again, another driver was missing. I repeated the process of installing the required drivers. Finally, the installation of DaVinci Resolve 19 begin. After running several command lines, DaVinci Resolve 19 was successfully installed. But my problems didn't end there. I realized I don't have a dedicated GPU, which is recommended for DaVinci Resolve. That's why I received the message, unsupported GPU processing mode. I tried to bypass the check, but I couldn't. After reading some articles, I confirmed that my hardware is not supported by DaVinci Resolve. However, if you have a dedicated GPU, you can install and use DaVinci Resolve on your Linux PC. 
Now, let's move on to our second video editing software, KDenLive. DenLive is an excellent video editing software for Linux, and the best part is that it can run on low-end PCs, like my mini PC. To install it, simply open the terminal and type .sudo apt install kdenlive. After running a few command lines, the software will be installed successfully. Just open the menu, and you'll see kdenlive is ready to use. You can easily edit your projects and export them without any watermark. And here, I discovered something new in the Zorin OS. Our software store wasn't working properly, so I decided to install an alternative. To do this, open the terminal and type sudo snap install snap store hit enter, and after a short wait, the new store will be installed. With this store, you can install any software without errors or needing to use the command line. It has almost every software available. Now, let's move on to our sixth need. Gaming. Let's check for Steam. Yes, we have Steam. I also searched for Epic Games, but it's not available here and the website doesn't support Linux. However, after some research, I found the Heroic Games Launcher. It's a free and open source game launcher for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. It serves as an alternative to the Epic Games Launcher, solving our Epic Games problem. Before we start the installation, I see that Steam is already downloaded. So, let's play some games from Steam first. Most games on Steam are for Windows, but some have Steam icon indicating they support Linux. To test this, I'll choose a small game for quick downloading and installation. The Skydive Drone Simulator game supports Linux, so let's install it. Once the game is installed, let's play. After some effort, I figured out that the game works fine, but my flying skills need improvement. Now let's move on to the Heroic Games installation process. In our new store, Heroic is not available, but it is available in our old store. However, we are unable to install it due to an unresolved error. So, let's move to the Heroic Game website and download the stable version. This is an executable software, meaning you will need this file every time you run it. First, we need to log in with our Epic Games ID. In Heroic, you can play both Windows and other platform games thanks to its cross-platform support and emulation features. If you have downloaded games on an external drive or another location, just click on Add Game, provide the game location, set the name, choose the platform, and then run the installer. After the game icon is created, you can play it. It may take some time, but the game will eventually start successfully. You can also play in full screen. And there you have it. After trying out Zorin OS, it's clear that this Linux distribution is very user-friendly and provides a seamless experience for productivity tasks and gaming. However, it's important to note that not all Windows apps are available, so you might need to find alternatives and be prepared to solve some issues using command lines. If you're a Windows user looking to explore something new, Zorin OS is definitely worth a try. It combines the best of both worlds, offering familiarity with a touch of innovation. So, why not step out of your comfort zone and give it a shot? Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech explorations. Until next time, happy computing.